So here's a picture of the final painting. In this video, I'm just going to be going over the underpainting stage. This will be followed by a second video where I bring the painting to a conclusion. This is the image um, of the still live that I'm going to be painting. Um, you can see I've already sketched it out. Um, I've sketched it out onto a piece of um, linen that's been stretched over hardboard. It's portrait grade linen so it's reasonably fine and this panel is about seven inches by five inches approximately. Um, you can see I'm just currently wiping over some oil over the back surface, over the background. Um, I've wiped over with linseed oil and I'm just wiping that back now. Um, it seems a bit silly sort of wiping off something that I just put on but even though I'm wiping it off there will be a fine residue of oil on the surface and the reason I'm doing that on the background is because uh, if you look at the image there's a very gradual transition from the left hand side to the right hand side and the linseed oil will just allow that paint to flow much better when I put it on. Um, I do sometimes um, oil the whole panel um, which allows the paint to flow easier. Um, so I'm going to mix up the colour for the background and I'm going to start off with the lighter area towards the right. Um, so I've started with the white and I'm bringing the, the it's Naples yellow actually that I'm mixing with it, um, and I'm bringing that to the white. Um, the reason I start with the white and bring the colour to the white is because if I did it the other way around you would find that the, the tinting power of the Naples yellow would mean I'd need huge amounts of white paint. Um, whenever you're mixing paint start with the white, if you're using white, start with the white and bring the colour to the white. Um, okay so I'm, I've mixed it up, it's, it's an approximate colour and I'm just adding a little bit of turpentine to it now just to um, cut it down a little bit and allow it to flow a little bit better. Um, I'm not too concerned about the accuracy of the colour at the moment. Um, it's more to get an approximate value. Um, all of this paint that's going on um, will be covered again. Um, this is just a block in and um, I will then be going over this again um, once it's tacky. Um, you could see I'm using um, a chisel edge brush there. It's a three quarter inch um, Rosemary's, Rosemary & Co Eclipse chisel edge brush. I do like these brushes because the sharp edge allows you to do um, really fine lines as well as um, covering broad areas. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of raw umber and added it to that uh, initial mix. Um, raw umber is essentially a very dark yellow um, and when you're mixing colors for shadows the shadows are just a darker version of the color that you have um, that, you, that you're trying to darken um, I try to avoid mixing black to create shadows as black is actually a very dark blue now if I was to mix black in with that Naples yellow obviously if I mix blue and yellow together I would end up with green and that's not what I want in the shadow um, so the shadow it's well it, I mean I'm not sure how accurate this camera is reproducing the colors that's a darker yellow that I'm putting on now I actually think um, looking at this now I think that when I do the second pass which I haven't yet done um, I will need to darken that quite a bit more. Um, one thing that you do notice when you put paint onto um, a canvas, on a white canvas, immediately you tend to think that um, you, you're applying the value too dark. And that's just because you're comparing it to the white. Um, obviously white's your lightest value. Um, so anything that you put on will seem darker. And that's the reason a lot of people actually pre-tint um, the canvas or the panels before they start painting, um, just to avoid that sort of trap of painting um, too light. Because your natural instinct is to lighten the colours, you think, oh, that's really dark, so you, you, you think about lightening it. Um, so I've applied the two halves, I've applied the darker side and the lighter side and what I'm probably going to do in a moment is just I'll get a fan brush 
and uh, blend the two together there you go so I've just mixed them two edges together and blend the colors in in this blocking stage I tend to use the fan brush a lot um, I'm not after sharp edges at all at the moment I just want a very loose um, approximation of where the darks and where the lights are um, and I'm trying to keep the paint fairly even it's quite thin it's been mixed with turpentine um, just so that it flows easily it doesn't go on in any sort of impasto form and it will dry dry quickly as well so now I'm adding a tiny bit of black and this is for the um, the surface the, the surface that the lemons are sitting on um, you see how mixing that in there how it tints it's got a really powerful tinting effect um, I've probably gone a little bit too dark there yeah, so I'll mix some more white into it just to um, raise the value slightly mixing with the palette knife um, I prefer in these initial stages you don't end up with a really lots of mud on the brush and it's easy to keep clean and the other thing you can do with the palette knife is you can hold it up and as long as it's in the same plane as the image that you're painting hold it up vertically and you can make a comparison with the paint that's on the knife and um, the color that you're trying to match it won't always be accurate but it gives you a good idea and you can also hold it up against um, your canvas and get an idea of how the, the value or the colour compares to what's already on there. Um, so I use the knife for mixing, like I say, especially in the early stages. So just putting in the dark areas. Um, this is a smaller chisel brush, I think this is a quarter inch chisel brush that I'm using here now. As you can see, the paint's very thin, almost inky, inky consistency. Um, you get the, it, the transparent effect, you get the canvas still showing through. As I say, this will all be gone over again. So you got the idea, and there's the basic, the blocking of the background. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to um, getting the the colors of the lemons and the first thing I want to try and do is get what I would call the local color of um, the larger of the two lemons the, the whole lemon not the sliced lemon um, and then what I mean by that is the color of the lemon where it's not in shadow or it's not in direct highlight so the sort of main color so I'm mixed I'm using a mixture of cadmium lemon um, and cadmium yellow and see what I'm talking about with the palette knife I can hold it up there and um, it give you an idea so the bit in the middle if that's the local color where the knife is approximately now and um, the right hand side there's going to be a darker yellow um, then there's the half tone in the transition between the light and the dark so I've mixed plenty of this up and the reason I've done that is I'm going to take some of the mixture and I'm then going to use that to either lighten or darken it. Um, I can darken it using raw umber, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I wouldn't want to use the black, um, because obviously black and yellow make green. So I'm using that raw umber, and that will just darken the value of the yellow. Um, Again, holding it up and, and checking how it looks against the canvas, how it looks against the actual still life. I'm adding a touch of burnt umber there. Burnt umber leans more towards orange, so that will just increase the chroma. And that, and what I mean by chroma is the the intensity of the colour. A little bit of um, yellow ochre there. That brings it the value up slightly I could actually add more of the local color which I'm doing now as you see that's raising the value slightly so I've obviously held the knife up there and realized that the values it's it's too low 
and it's worth spending time um, doing these mixes um, and getting them as accurate as they are as accurate as you can as I say I am gonna go over all of this work but in these initial stages you're just setting up um, for everything that comes later so if the, the more accurate you can make it now the easier your life will be later you don't have to make too many drastic changes that little piece of cardboard that I'm holding with my left hand with a hole in it is a little viewfinder that I sometimes use and that's that helps to isolate colors because the hole's so tiny you can hold it up against the still life and um, hold your palette knife next to it and you get a really good comparison you can isolate an individual color um, it's especially difficult with things like brightly colored objects like the lemon um, to isolate where the shadows and the highlights because obviously there's a transition from one to another um, so this just does help to isolate those so this is the shadow area um, as you can see if you were to compare the colour that I've just put on now which appears very dark if you compare that with the photograph of the lemon it's actually too dark um, I think that's partly down to the fact that the photographs probably um, slightly overexposed um, but I'm not making excuses I think I've, I've um, mixed the colour too dark um, I am painting this directly from life um, however I think um, there's always a tendency when you're painting directly onto a white canvas to paint the values slightly too high. Um, I'm aware of that and sometimes possibly overcompensate. And secondly, um, it's, it's always easier to paint over the top of a darker colour on the second pass. Um, they always say to try and get the, the darks in early um, and then you can work into the darks later. Um, I hope that sounds like a convincing excuse. So this next shadow that I'm going to work on, this is the cast shadow from the sliced lemon. Um, and this is um, an important part of the painting actually because this shadow um, sets up um, the edge of the sliced lemon. Um, and it's that edge that will really draw the viewer's attention. Um, in a lot of paintings what you're trying to do is control the edges um, between values uh, and by controlling those edges you, you're actually controlling which bits of the painting grab the viewer's attention. So it's generally the sharper the edge um, the more attention grabbing it is. Um, and that's the reason when I painted the background I wanted it quite muted and blended. Um, the transition between the tabletop and the back, the back wall I wanted that to be a very gentle transition because I don't want it to draw the viewer's attention. Um, the lemons are the star of the show. Um, so now I'm painting in um, the half tone um, between the, the shadow and the local colour that I talked earlier. Um, again, it's very blocky and this will be all be blended in a moment. So once I get all of the colours on there, I'll just get a fan brush and blend it all in together. The one shadow that I haven't got in um, is the um, the shadow underneath the lemons. Although there's, there is a darker area there, there is actually a shadow missing and that's the very darkest point where the, where the lemons sit on the table. That dark shadow is called the occluded shadow and um, I will put that in on the next pass. That tends to really ground the objects um, and make them seem as though they're sitting on the surface. So I think the next thing I need to mix or apply is the local colour which is the colour in the middle there, the yellow. And you'll see that really pops when I put that on. Um, easy at this point 
to start to try and model the actual lemon um, too much with, with too much detail and I find in a moment I start to do that myself actually um, it's, it, this stage as I said earlier is really a setup for everything that comes later all of this is going to be painted over um, so although it doesn't look anything like the finished painting try not to worry um, the, the term you've made a mistake or it's not looking accurate because all you're doing is placing the scaffolding in place for everything that comes later here we go so I'm just gonna blend those colors in just to take the edges away a little bit now at the top right hand corner um, I'm not I wasn't quite happy with the shape of the drawing of the lemon in fact um, there's there's quite quite a few sort of corrections that need to be made to the drawings um, the sliced lemon um, isn't accurate at the moment um, I, as I said this is very much an approximation and I will correct a lot of the drawing um, on the second pass so when I come to do the background again I'll tidy up the shape of the lemon um, and the same with, with all the other drawing errors they'll get corrected next on the next pass I mean it is important if you can get it accurate first time then to do that um, but I'm painting from life and um, I often um, I, I find it very difficult to get things right first time I think some artists are much better at drawing than me um, I have to constantly come, come back and correct things um, for me painting is very much a process of constant correction um, until I arrive at something that I'm happy with I think it's obviously if you can you can see the errors then you're halfway there to correcting them now throughout a lot of this um, I'll be squinting so I'm looking at the lemons and squinting and if you if you do the same when you're viewing the painting by standing back and having and squinting at the image that you painted you get a better idea um, it's important though that when you're actually putting the paint on not to squint then um, squint at the image squint at, squint at the actual still life um, to see the value differences but when you're painting you keep your eyes wide open and then every now and then take a step back and have a look and make a comparison between what you're painting and the actual painting itself see now I can see just by watching this back um, that I'm starting to get fussy and really I'm probably overworking this at this point uh, making more of a mess so it would have been a good point to sort of leave that lemon and move on to the next one as I'm going to have to go back and correct some of the things I've done there always wiser in retrospect I'm watching this back and doing the voiceover after I've painted it now this as I said this edge is important however this that where the 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 lemon skin the rind is here um, it, although it's in shadow it's not as dark as the, sh the cast shadow on the main lemon so I've had to just l lighten that value slightly just so that you can see um, it's it's going to be quite a soft edge but it's important that we can see there's a definite definitely a separate lemon there so this this value that I'm painting now is similar to the half tone value that I put on earlier can see I'm sort of correcting the drawing as I go a little bit I actually think that color needs to go further down so back to the local color and as we turn that corner uh, more lights hitting the the lemon so we get that stronger edge and again this will be um, a strong contrast between the dark of the the tabletop whenever you're setting up a still life um, it's important to think about these edges um, the lights against the darks and vice versa because it's that that it that, that adds interest to the painting um, you want those contrasts and those variations some of the edges you want to be soft that just disappear and other edges um, quite strong and sharp 
Um, and, and as I say, that controls the, the viewer's eye as they're looking at the painting to a degree. Colour does the same thing. Very strong colours um, come forward. Um, more muted colours recede. Still correcting this drawing, I obviously wasn't happy with that bit. In fact, looking at it now, I think um, when I come to work on this again, I'm going to have to do quite a bit to correct the shape of that. But as you can see, this is me um, breaking my own rules and getting drawn into fussing with, with the painting, rather than just leaving it. When you're painting, you, you're constantly having to remind yourself of these things, the lessons that you've learned in the past. Um, I know some artists write them down on their easel, have a, a list of things that the rules that they should follow. So now I'm mixing up the, um, the actual sliced part of the lemon, where you can see the fruit inside, um, and that's a yellow oak that I've mixed in with some of the um, half tone colour. It's, it's got a slightly more sort of pinky tone to it. Um, the colours on, um, on the palette, don't, you can't see them as well as, um, they're not being reproduced as well as obviously you can see them yourself in life. So very broadly, just blocking this in. Again, that paint's very thin. This will be dry in well, touch dry tacky in sort of 24 hours. I could probably work over some of it almost immediately. Um, I, um, I don't use uh, mediums such as liquid. Um, if you wanted the painting to dry quickly, um, then liquid is a, like a resin medium and that would allow you to paint on this, this under painting and it would be touch dry within an hour or so. Um, you can then paint straight over it. I'm tending to just use sort of turpentine just to thin the paint down. Um, when I do my second pass, I do use a medium. I use um, linseed oil and turpentine mixture in 50-50 ratio um, just to allow the paint to flow a little bit better. And because the, I tend to paint in thin layers, it does dry reasonably quick. So even within the same day I can paint over an area. Now I think what I'm doing here, yeah, just the centre of the lemon, just marking it in approximately, um, just to give me an idea when I come down, come to do that again next time. Um, that's not quite a pure white that I'm using there, it's slightly off-white. I'm saving the pure white for the highlight on the lemon. This, this again is just too much detail, I'm fussing a little bit. So this was the background part of the lemon that I wasn't happy with. Um, it's, it's more spherical in my painting than the actual lemon was. The lemon was more of an oval. So I'm just cutting in from the outside. Now you can see that that paint that I put on earlier on is easily dry enough to paint over now and that's in the space of just over half an hour or so. Um, and that really has brought that edge out. Probably a bit too much at the moment. Um, I don't quite want it that strong at the moment. I'm going to work on that in the next pass. 
I'm just doing this to reshape the edge. It is picking up some of the paint from below. You can see that's mixing. Not really important at the moment. It's quite important when you're painting just to get used to things like that. Um, the more you paint, the more familiar with you become with how how the paint's going to react at certain stages. If you if you're painting over something that's wet, like this, um, and how how you need to mix the consistency of the paint to make sure you don't do what I've just done there and drag paint into one paint color into another color. See, I'm just cutting the edge out slightly there. So what I'll do now, just tidying that up a little bit, and then I'm going to leave this for a few hours, um, and then come back to it and start to work over it again. Um, so I've probably spent, it's probably taken me, I don't know, 40 minutes or so to get to this point, um, and now I've got a framework that I can use um, to, to then build on. And um, there'll be lots of things about this um, underpainting that I'm not happy with. Um, some of them will be the values, some of it will be the drawing and as I say um, the next step is to go in and correct those things, get the values much more accurate, get the drawing much more accurate and then um, once I've done that we should have a really um, solid image that I can then work in the details. So it's ba essentially I work in three layers, I'd start with this underpainting, I then go over again um, making my corrections once I'm happy with the image and then the final the final pass is just going over in uh, adding details in putting highlights in um, so there you go that's the the final sort of block in it's just an underpainting um, very loose at the moment um, but you'll see um, that in the the next video how I progress from here <laughs>